Good morning, folks. It's been an interesting couple of days for our star. An active region came out of nowhere in Delta-class fashion and is still Delta even though the complex area is no longer on the right side of Earth's perspective. The first flares did shoot out ahead of the group, but now the Delta spot is in back. We have had some stronger solar flares since we spoke yesterday, still in M range, but none produced major CMEs like the ones we had already seen. Yesterday's eruption of focus has now been fully analyzed by the experts and everyone pretty much agrees. This eruption was directly fired at our planet, with both NASA and NOAA's Enlil spirals showing impact at the start of August 24th UTC, which is actually 8 p.m. Eastern Time tonight. NOAA's moving Enlil isn't updated, but they did release this image last night. When the shockwave arrives at Earth, we will already be perturbed. This morning, the solar wind is showing a corona hole stream impact that was very dense, and we're already seeing the post-shockwave rise in speed. The effects are starting now, and a level 2 storm is already in progress. As you check out some incoming filaments, know that by the time the impacts occur, I will have also raised the earthquake index to high on QuakeWatch.net due to the space weather, coming Jupiter conjunction of the Sun, and of course the coming of a corona hole that actually changes the portal polarity as we've been positive for a while now. In the weeks since we dropped down from a high quake watch index, there have been zero magnitude 6 earthquakes, rare locations taking all the top spots since then. In the news today, Brand new galactic center analyses. I couldn't hope to show you everything here in the news, but this has deeper look written all over it, and it's linked for you below. NASA's Earth Observatory showing an amazing bloom in the Baltic. And finally, we have the Weather Channel with our coming three-month temperature predictions in the United States. That's weather.com. Now more solar flares means more storms. The twin typhoons are still trucking with Loki and Kilo over to the west of Hawaii as well. There is another storm potentially forming to the east of it there. And of course in the Atlantic, Danny is a hurricane. But we've now also got storms forming to the north and east of it. That makes two typhoons in the West Pacific and six storms from the Central Pacific to the Atlantic. We're coming close to one of the greatest tropical outbreaks in the history of recorded weather. Folks, featured today is yesterday's episode of Fly on the Wall. We aim for interesting most weeks, but yesterday the tone was serious. I got very personal on the topic, and we discuss a topic as seriously as we have discussed any topic since 2011. Members, you cannot miss this. It's important, and I promise by the time we're done, you'll know why we're close to having the greatest tropical outbreak in history. Of course, the discussion topic is just one of the four talks I will give at Observing the Frontier in October. It's less than two months until we get our science on in Pittsburgh. You guys got to come see us. And I understand hotels are really filling up due to a Steelers home game that weekend, so no more procrastinating. We've got a big low in convergence dropping awful weather here in the northern states, and it is shifting east. Europe has two storms churning in the north and northwest, weather shares are appreciated, and down under the convergence, very easily identified as usual. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Website members, no joke, time to check out Fly on the Wall if you've been putting it off. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe everyone.